In today's video, we're gonna mod the Trust Gaming Callus TKL Mechanical Keyboard. Sponsored, not sponsored, by the way. Uh, I've been working with Trust for, I wanna say, over two years now. It's probably been about two years, three months. In any case, today's video isn't sponsored. I just figured it'd make for a fun little project. A bit more challenging too than modding your standard GK61. So figured, why the hell not? If all of you like it, I'll mod some more because I imagine I can get an infinite amount of these. Anyway, like I said before, it's a TKL mechanical keyboard, meaning there's no numpad. Comes with a little instruction manual, keycap puller, although not the type of keycap puller that I like. By default, it has Otamu red switches, which are super pingy, but we'll be fixing those in a little bit. And to add a little bit of heft to the keyboard to make it feel a bit more premium, they added this stainless steel plate. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it doesn't help with the pinginess, but it makes the keyboard feel a lot more premium. Like this feels better than say an Apex Pro and that for the price of 45 pounds, not too bad. Anyway, here's what the board sounds like right out of the box. Now I think that we can all agree that the stabilizers sound god awful. Don't worry, I fixed them. In fact, I replaced them, but let's not talk about that. Other than that though, by default, the keyboard sounds pretty good. If anything, it's really deep, which is something a lot of people are going for nowadays anyway. That being said, let's get to work, all right? First order of business, removing the keycaps. Next up, unscrewing the case. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there are like 10 different screws, 11 different screws, ton of screws, all right? Make sure you don't forget one of them. After that, you can unplug the PCB. And then finally, you can desolder the switches. This is not a hot swap keyboard, by the way. Now, between you and me, I hadn't desoldered anything since high school. I wanna say it's been a good like 14 years, 15 years. So it was a bit of a butch job, but I got it done, all right? And then finally, you can remove the stabilizers. Time for the first mod, the PE foam mod. Now I actually used the PE foam the keyboard came in, so quick little pro tip, don't throw out the PE foam, all right? If anything, next time you order something from Amazon that comes in PE foam, just keep it around. I'm sure it'll come in handy at some point. Oh, it actually went with two layers of PE foam. Anyway, I don't know if this is bad for the PCB. I'm gonna guess that it's not since I've never broken a PCB and I've used a print stick, I wanna say like five times, six times, more than once anyway. Anyway, I use a print stick to glue the PE foam to the PCB, makes it a lot easier to cut the PE foam to size, makes it a lot easier to cut out holes for the stabilizers, so I would recommend it. Another way to do it would be to put a switch in either one of the corners. But obviously, since this is not a hot swappable keyboard, I would have had to solder in the switches, which I hadn't done for 14 years, like I said before, and then desolder them again afterwards. So, print stick for the win. Oh, and if you're struggling to figure out where to cut holes for the stabilizers, just quickly put the plate on top, get a marker out. Nice and easy, does it? Now, instead of holy modding every single one of the stock stabilizers, which, let's be honest, I couldn't be bothered to do, I picked up some Duroc plate mount stabilizers, lubed the housings and stems with Crytox 205 grade zero, put some dialectic grease on the wires, and then I did holy mod the spacebar, but only the spacebar. In the past, I found that you don't need to holy mod to the backspace or the enter key, the shift key. Generally speaking, they don't really rattle too, too much, assuming you loop them properly, but the spacebar can be a bit of a pain in the ass, so I figured I would holy mod that one just to play it safe. And just in case you don't know what the holy mod is, it basically means I put a little bit of band-aid inside the stem of the stabilizer to stop it from rattling. I basically put a little cushion in there for the wire. I want a pro tip, before you solder in all the switches, test your stabilizers, all right? At one point, I didn't test the stabilizer when putting together a KBD light and I had to take the entire thing apart again. Wouldn't recommend it.
For the switches, I went with the Echo Magic Greens. You can pick up a pack of 45 of these for just $10. Super cheap, well worth the money. Lube them with Crytox 205 Grade Zero, and I back lubed the springs with GPL 105. And then came the chore I was dreading the most, soldering in the switches. Now again, I hadn't done this for 14 years, had no clue what the hell to do. And instead of watching a tutorial, I figured I would just wing it. Long story short, in order to get the switch to work, you have to completely douse the pin in tin. I don't know if this is the correct way to do it. It doesn't look pretty, but the keyboard works. Every single switch works, so just go with that. I'm sure if I did a couple more keyboards, I'd get better at it. For now, though, it doesn't look pretty. And before I got the hang of it, I already stopped recording. Oh, and after I sold it in all the switches, I also did the Tempest Tape mod. Again, pretty straightforward mod. I basically put two layers of masking tape on the back of the PCB. Makes the keyboard pop a little more. Would recommend it. And as always, remember to cut some holes for the standoffs. Otherwise, you won't be able to put the PCB back in the case. And then finally, I did another little something which I've never done before, which is spray paint the case. Now, I actually really like the look of the steel plate. I think it makes the keyboard look a little bit more premium. That being said, I very strongly dislike a black plastic case. So I decided to paint it white. In this case, I did watch the tutorial because yet again, I had no clue what to do and I didn't really want to do it two times or three times. Frankly, I wanted to just do it once and be done with it. So I thought I'd relay the information to you. First up, remove the rubber feet on the bottom of the case. After that, you want to sand down every part of the case that you want to paint. I decided to do the bottom as well, but I reckon this would be a lot easier if you just did the sides, you know, stick with the parts that you can actually see. After that, you want to put masking tape on the standoffs inside the case and also on the feet on the back of the case, otherwise they don't work properly anymore. And then it's time to put on the primer. Now, again, like I said, I watched the tutorial. In the tutorial, it looked really easy. It's surprisingly difficult to evenly coat the case. So, spoiler alert, I didn't evenly coat the case. And then after you let that dry for a little bit, you can apply the white paint. Again, try to do this as evenly as humanly possible. Naturally, my coat is not even in the slightest. Plus, there were some parts I had to go over again. It just didn't look right. There were little spots where there was no paint at all. And anyway, after waiting for a couple of hours, I think it turned out okay. I'd like to try it again. I was actually thinking of painting a bottom case white and then painting the plate like a burgundy red because I actually have a keycam set that would look really good with that. Anyway, let me know what you think because I have another one of these keyboards lying around. And after waiting for a couple of hours, I could finally put the keyboard together. Bumped into a little issue though, nothing too, too crazy. Long story short, I didn't put some of the switches in properly. So when screwing down the plate, some of the switches popped out. Because of that, I imagine some keys are gonna sound a little bit uneven, but other than that, it's not too much of an issue. And because this is a UK layout keyboard, I also didn't have a 1U hash key and a 1.25 U shift, but I managed to find some replacement keys. Oh, but I was that care, by the way, it's a GMK botanical clone set, by the way, that I got off AliExpress, I wanna say like a year ago now, a year and a half ago now. I've had this set for ages. Anyway, before we get into the final sound test, do me a favor, drop a like in the video, subscribe if you're new. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know because I would love to make more. That being said, hope you like the video and enjoy the sound test. <laughs> 